The Hidden Southwest, The Arch Hunters, essay by James Flahos. The Rock Arch is lost. It's around here somewhere, but could be anywhere. We've searched all morning and gotten nowhere. Picking my way through boulders and gnarled junipers, I reach the scalloped rim of a high mesa and peer over the edge. My stomach drops. This part of Canyonlands National Park is known as the Needles District, a name too tidy to describe the slick rock chaos erupting from the valley below. There are knobs, blobs, towers, and fins, an array containing every shape of sculpted rock save the one we're seeking. The arch is lost. Two men join me on the overlook. The first wears a plaid western shirt, neatly tucked into blue Levi's, leathery, all limbs and no body fat. He steps nimbly to the precipice. Did you talk to Alex Ranny? He is saying. I did, replies the second man, wearing a khaki shirt, shorts, and mirrored sunglasses. He looks like a refugee from a Kalahari game drive. Did you get any more clues? Asks Western shirt. Nope. Ranny was elusive, replies sunglasses. Tight-lipped. Totally, he said. I want you to be able to find it yourself and get the thrill of discovery. The rock formation we seek is a quadruple arch known as Klingon Battle Cruiser. The first recorded sighting wasn't until 1994 by Ranny, a canyoneer from Tucson, Arizona. Not on any map or trail, it has probably been glimpsed by fewer than a dozen people in the history of the park. Tom Budlong, Western shirt, and Tom Van Beber, sunglasses. Desperately want to add their names to the list. These guys are no casual tourists; rather, they are arch hunters. Few sites are celebrated in, or as iconic of, the American West as the Natural Rock Arch. Arches have astounded generations of desert wanderers, from Teddy Roosevelt, who camped below Rainbow Bridge in 1913, to Edward Abbey, who memorably venerated them in desert solitaire. America's spans are internationally recognizable wonders on par with Old Faithful and Half Dome. Their shapes burned into the collective consciousness by countless photographs and films. Rock shouldn't take flight in the sky. When it does, in scorn of known physical laws, people take notice. Arches National Park, America's best-known repository of spans, draws more than 800,000 visitors each year from around the world. Yet, despite such obvious attraction, few consider searching outside park boundaries. Even though the Colorado Plateau has the highest density of rock arches worldwide, there are at least two thousand stone spans scattered throughout the Four Corner States. Bud Long and Van Beber belong to the world's preeminent and perhaps only arch hunting club, NABS. The Natural Arch and Bridge Society. Its 110 members scour the globe by plane, boat, four by four, and foot. They prowl Antarctic islands, Algerian sands, and the canyons of the American Southwest. True explorers, they live for the moment of discovery, rounding a canyon bend to spot a miracle of natural engineering that perhaps nobody else in the world has ever seen. In the case of Klingon battle cruiser, that moment of revelation is proving hard to come by. Van Beber had invited me along on a week's worth of arch hunting, hoping I might catch the fever. This is not an encouraging start. He examines a map, scratches his chin, and sighs. It's probably just right below us. I leave the pair to study their charts and hike several hundred yards along the rim. Looking down at an expanse of tawny rock, I realize. I am gazing through it, through a yawning window at the tiny green dots of trees in the valley below. Nearby, I see three additional portals. Over here! I shout. I step carefully from the canyon rim onto the top of the arch and feel a swirl of vertigo. After it subsides, I take a second step, then a third, following a rock catwalk in a blue sky, reaching the apex. I rotate slowly around, a full 360 degrees. 
the canyon bottom hundreds of feet straight below. Worldwide, arches number in the tens of thousands, and probably no place is better suited to their formation than the Colorado Plateau. The sandstone is porous and erosive. The geological strata are such that harder layers lie atop weaker ones. The softer rock erodes from below to leave an arch standing above. And finally, the plateau is in the midst of a rapid geological uplift. Cliff walls push higher, while at the same time, rivers and meltwater carve deeper and faster. The twin forces produce the critical fins and cracks. A day after finding Klingon battle cruiser, I stand at the base of an undulating mass of slick rock, a natural staircase of narrow benches and tilted slopes, with Van Beber's outstretched palms providing a necessary toehold on blank rock. I scramble up to the first shelf. After walking along it until I find a low angle passage, I clamber to the next level of the staircase, and the next. A few hundred yards upslope is my goal, the massive triangular portal of cleft arch. The only visible route up to the fourth and final bench, however, is too steep. Frustrated, I follow the shelf south and round a corner to make a startling discovery. Tucked under an overhang, invisible until I'm right upon it, is an Anasazi rune with three well-preserved walls of neatly stacked stone. Arch hunting, I'm learning, often yields much more than the arches themselves.